Well, I, d I don't know them. I haven't seen them. I didn't grow up with them. You know what they all say? Everybody knows you. Don't know. Everybody don't know me, but they have a whole lot that don't. <laughs> but that's the saying around here that everybody knows. I was born in Eskin, Kentucky, August 18th, 1922. I lived, my dad had a post office. I lived there until I was uh, approximately three years old. Then we moved to Fordville and he had a grocery store. My mother was a clerk and I, she had about, I think, uh, four brothers and two, three sisters, I believe it was. And she was the youngest in the family. And my, my dad was the oldest of his family, and he had uh, he had two brothers and three, three four sisters, I think. And uh, his dad died when my dad was. 20, I think 20 or 21 years old, and he had to raise them too. My dad was postmaster at Askin, Kentucky, and he named, him, he named me after the postmaster journal, Hubert Works, and I've got, still got a copy of the letter he wrote, my dad wrote and told him that he named me after him. First, I remember when I was little, was going to a funeral the day I was three years old, and we went to my mother's sister lived well on top of the hill. It was an August day, it was on my birthday, and I tried to go home. And finally they paddled me and put me to sleep and I reckon I slept the rest of the night. Then we moved from Askins to Fordville. And in 1930 we moved out to the farm. I went my first school there, first grade. And that, uh, I stayed with my dad a lot of times at that store and heard all these old people talk with things that happened way years ago, way before my time. And I remember quite a bit of it. Then I lived on the farm, went to a country school, which he had eight, eight grades there. And uh, went in a one-room schoolhouse, well, with an old coal stove. We had two water buckets we carried from a well up the road. And we'd have recitation banks. They would have the class, they'd call us up to that bank. We'd have a class, and then and when he was older, they would go back to their seats and they'd call another place. They'd have eight, about eight classes a day, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And some of them, some of them be little, just little kids, and some of them be grown people, and some of them, some people going to eighth grade they had no way to go to high school, so they come back and went a year or two more to the eighth grade. Oh, we used to have one teacher at, at a time. One teacher taught the whole eighth, called first up to the eighth grade. And we had, the school started in July and was out in February. We just had seven months of school and they run from eight o'clock to four o'clock. And we got an uh, hour of all for dinner in 15 minutes recess morning and 15 of evening. 
My sister went there, I think, one year, then she went to high school. Boy, they had to board and go to high school. And uh, I quit at the eighth grade and went to work. And uh, the rest of them graduated, and all the rest of the brothers and sisters I had. Three brothers and a sister, they all graduated from the eighth grade, which they call a, a diploma, got a diploma to go to high school, and they all went to high school. And all of them went to college and graduated. Well, I want to move back to this farm, 17th of February, 1930. With, uh, I think we had four road wagon horses and four ball horses. That was our transportation. No rock road, all the mud. The first seat he had was coal with grates, no stoves. And finally we put in a oil stove. And then we got electric heat, we put in electric, and we also the telephone system wasn't very good. But we'd have, if we wanted to call anybody, it wasn't on your line, you had to call operators or two or three to get through. A long distance, you had to go through, I don't know how many to get the long distance to call. That was the first car I'd ever, my dad had a Model A, a 29 Model A car, Touring, that was, they called it a Touring. Had it, I think we had it 11 years. And drove it 11,000 miles when he got rid of it. So, that. Well, I guess we had a little entertainment as we went along through life. And uh, about all we had was, uh, all, most people in their home would have a little candy party or play party and we'd all, not, not, not every night, maybe, once or twice a week and we'd all go to those parties and play. We'd celebrate a little Christmas party at church, churches and schools. And uh, and that was about all the entertainment we had, only with what we games we fixed we'd maybe get together and play a little ball or something like that on a Sunday evening. We had a little old croquet place where we played croquet. We, we played on that on Sunday evening. Of course, most time, when we went to church and then parties and things, we either walked three or four miles if we did any further, we rode horses. I can remember when we went to churches around here, there was a lot more horses tied in the yard than it was all the moment. They even went, and what they used to have for track meeting, you could hear them old road wagons run way in the night, some guy would would run them and haul people to church. After you go to bed, you can hear them rolling over rocks and things, wanting to dead folk to go. At this little town, a little, uh, it, it had a lodge hall, I forget the name of it, and it had a one room schoolhouse that we went to. And there was a little store. There had been a real, had been a store here years ago. In this country through here, 
not all their about all their stuff shipped in on a train and delivered to Askins, Kentucky, that which got the whole country back through here to Rutherford. That's where the supplies, but I've been told that way back before that is that everything, most everything come to Cloverport on a ship dip and this old road here did go to Cloverport. That, that's where everybody got their stuff way back. But when they put the train in, I don't know what year they put it in, they got it shipped in on the train. Then at 20, I got drafted to the United States Army. I served for a year. I took my basic training at uh, Cape Wallace, Texas, then advanced training at uh, Fort Bliss, El Paso, Texas. Then I went to uh, North Africa. Then, then from North Africa, I went to Italy, invaded. Italy, and then Italy, I was on Salerno Beachhead, then I went to the Angio Beachhead. Then we took Rome, and I went about a hundred miles north of Rome, and come back and went to southern France, Marseille, France, and went from France into Germany, across the River Rhine, I went through Germany, was in Innsbruck, Austria, where the war in. Then I come back to Nuremberg and stayed about Germany and stayed there about six months so I could get home. But I did cross the Atlantic Ocean twice on the ship. It took 13 days and 13 nights to go over and nine to come back. And I landed at Old Ann Africa to start with. And when I come back, I landed back at Newport News, Virginia. 534th Anti Aircraft. And we was a separate battalion. And I served in three different armies the 5th Army in Italy. 7th Army in uh, uh, in France, in Germany, and I was switched to the 3rd Army and discharged out of the 3rd Army after the war was over. So I served in three armies. And I also saw Winston Churchill as we was going on an invasion one. I slept on the ship in Italy. What was that island? Isle of Capri. Isle of Capri. I spent two nights on the Isle of Capri. just out of Naples in Italy. That was the first invasion I met, and that was the first landing that we made on European soil over there. In uh, Salanite Beach. And we, uh, we finally just kind of bypassed, got around it. It was hard to take. And I stood on a hill and watched them bomb the monastery there. What was that monastery? Monte Casino. Huh? Monte Casino. It was. Is the name of the monastery. Yeah. And uh, it is written about in the book The Monuments Men. And George Clooney was actually in a movie called The Monuments Men. But 
But you, I was, but you, I was in there. I was gone. I, we just was our protection. We all, almost all the shots we fired was firing at airplanes, and that's why we separate separate battalion because they sent us from one place to the other wherever they needed our power. And that was approximately about the first thing they tried to bomb out was uh, our airplane defense. Then we went to a show in Nuremberg, Germany after the war was over. And Egan Bergman and Jack Benny put on a show there at that big stadium there. And I got an autograph on, on a mark. Got it, got it, still got it over the house. Then I come back and uh, went to work on the farm. And in the meantime, I married a girl named Sue. Matthew's head, and I got to put Matthew's in there. I also had two daughters, Sheila and Tony, and Tony's deceased. And I have one brother left, I guess, in my family. There was five of us that have got the youngest brother. That's it. Then I have lived on that farm on this farm since 1930, only I spent three years of it in the army and the rest of it on the farm. And I'm still on it at the age of 95 today. When I started farming, we done it all with horses and mules. One old boy, you walked to it would take you about a, it would take you a good day to plow an acre. Plow was about twelve inch plow. Most of the time had three horses hitched to the plow. And then, then later years I got a tractor, and I used it for quite a few years. A small one. In fact, I think I've had three or four tractors. On the farm, I had hogs, cattle, and I raised mostly hay and corn, and tobacco was my main income. That the only thing that survived. It fed families and sent a lot of kids in the neighborhoods to school. The reason I decided to be a farmer was uh, I like stock and animals, and I always had them. I run for master in 1953 and was elected for four years, served from uh, 1954 to 1958. And we done maintenance and and worked with the school superintendent a whole lot in the four year. Then uh, after the four years, we had four years there, we built a new hospital in uh, Hartford. And after our time was out, bachelor, I served uh, about 11 years on the hospital board, taking care of their problems and, and uh, all, all that stuff. And that, that we quite a few farms raised during the 11 years with personnel mostly. 
that had more trouble getting the people to work or get along with each other. Of course, I also served on the election commission. Okay. I was appointed by the state election commissioner. For, I served on that one on about three years, I think. That's uh, about all of that. Of course, I, at that time, I had a store in Fordsville. And uh, I think we was in that maybe 10 or 12 years. And uh, farming got so modernized that uh, you couldn't get big enough because to, to serve the people. And that was about it. We sold feed for life, some medicine for livestock and all that. But I farmed all the time I was doing that. I've been grandmaster of the Christmas parade in the town. And they made you a Kentucky Colonel. Somebody did. The town of Fordsville did. I don't know who it was, but anyhow, anyhow I am a Kentucky Colonel. That's a, um, a title given by the governor of the state for people who have made significant contributions to the welfare of fellow Kentuckians. The house you live in now used to be a doctor's it office? It used to be a doctor's okay. office one time. All I know him is Dr. Billy Hedden. They was two of my dad's uh, uncles were doctors. One of them was Dr. Billy, Dr. Gear, the other one was Dr. George, a doctor over in Indiana somewhere. I've also got one daughter. That's a doctor. It works as she's a professor at Vanderbilt University. And she's in cancer research and goes all over the world. I better put that in. And at 95, I can't see good and can't hear good, but I can remember very good. Proud of that. And I get lots of calls every year, so what somebody won't know something. You don't, you don't underestimate people. You can underestimate them awfully. You never know what somebody knows. I've got every day in the, I went through the depressions, the good times, and the bad times. And I've seen every day of the great society. I've lived in the house by myself for the last 12 years and still are. You see a lot of stuff in, in 95 years and you can't realize how, how things has really changed.